It is, in my mind, the greatest endurance ride there is. This is the granddaddy of all endurance rides. It's the toughest. It's the oldest. It's the most historic. It's the most grueling 100-mile endurance race in the world. The best adjective is relentless. Anything can happen. There's a lot of variables out here. There is no place within Tevis of which you can take a breath. The ride is a physical, mental challenge for you and your horse. It's the hardest ride in the world. Tevis is the world championship of horse and rider events. It is an unbelievable physical achievement for both horse and rider. These horses are fine-tuned athletes. There have been more individual people who have summited Everest than have ever completed the Tevis Cup in 55 years. If you're not ready right now, you're not gonna be ready. You overcome something when you do Tevis. You and your horse overcome it. Just finish. Just finish. It's a religious experience on a horse. Nobody who has ridden the Tevis Cup ever, ever forgets it. The horse race comes in three stages. The first 36 miles through the Granite Cheek Wilderness and the swampy bogs and the hill climbs to get to Robinson. If you get to Robinson Flat and your horse is all right, you have beat one of the major challenges. From there, you ride down through Last Chance and Deadwood, through Chicken Hawk and eventually into Forest Hill, which becomes about sunset and the climbs in, in the canyons can be anywhere 130, 140 degrees. That still air just sits in the canyons, and so when you're going down, you're just you're going into the heat. When you come up, it's really, really steep. From there, when you hit Forest Hill, then you ride in the dark, and you ride in canyons that, believe me, you're better off riding them in the dark because they're just straight drop-offs. You come into a vet check and they put glow bars on the horse, it's pitch black, and there's your leap of faith because you're riding in total darkness on very, very narrow trails. And if you didn't trust your horse before, you do then. When you cross the river, you know you're on your way home. You've got about 10 miles from there. You go to the last vet check with your breath held. Lower quarry, it's 94 miles. If you get through there, you cross No Hands Bridge. And from there, it's four miles up into Auburn. The horses are all tacked up. The riders have left their trailers. They're warming them up on the road. The trail is open. So we look at the horse, we look at their heart rate, which gives us an idea of how they're coping with the ride. We look at physical parameters to see whether there's any gear problems, whether there's any injuries that they've had to any part of their body. We can pinch their skin and tell how dehydrated they are. We listen to their heart, find out what their heart rate is, and, and is it coming down? Is it recovering? Uh, we watch them trot out to see that they're moving correctly and that they're not stilted. Uh, not uncomfortable and just coping well with the ride and metabolically too that they're not overly dehydrated. We walk around the horse looking for any obvious injuries or wounds. If we're concerned about a horse we'll get at least three vets together, have a discussion, watch the horse trot out again and decide whether it needs to be pulled based on whether we think it's going to affect the horse or not.
express it properly. It's just, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a multiple, a multitude of emotions. Gratitude to this animal that has given so much.